So this is our 3G alternator conversion. This here is an alternator off of a 95 Ford Taurus, and it had this pulley on it here, serpentine. And this is our alternator off the rig, and we're going to take, just undid this with the impact wrench. We're going to take this pulley off here, and put goes right onto here. And we set up our height distance here. It looks like we're going to have, well, you guys can't see. It looks like we're going to have to adjust that up a little bit, but we'll get that. We're probably going to have to put some washers down there below to shim this up. And that should be perfect. So we actually kind of switched this up a little bit. I used this w, double pulley um, on this one. It's actually like off of one set up for smog versus this one here that's not. Um, this pulley here actually went down too far on this one. And so this one set up a little bit higher and didn't use any shims on it. Um, so we it should be relatively close as far as belt alignment. I think a little bit of a fraction isn't going to do much to throw it off. Um, the next thing here is I think I might need some washers on this and find the right bolt because for lucky that goes in there, but I doubt it's the right thread. No, it's not. I think this is a standard bolt, and that there's a standard as a metric hole. So we're either going to find the right bowl for that or tap it out. So now that we got that alternator in there, next step is to wire up our battery that we're going to put in the back. Now what I went ahead and did is went down to O'Reilly and bought a set of two gauge um, 20 foot jumper cables. It cost me $49.99. The other choice would have been to go to the stereo store and pay $3 a foot for st single strand um, but to make it work out, theirs would have had to been double strand and two dollars and fifty cents a foot to be as cheap as this. Um, and then these things, the clamps are free. Um, which, if you want to buy those separately down there, they're like nine bucks a set. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is we have this main a power distribution box I stole out of a Ford Taurus. It's pretty nice. Open it up here. You got some big heavy fuses, some big heavy wiring, and a bolt here that's your main power lead. So what we're going to do, going to go ahead and bolt that up here on the firewall. And we're going to run the hot from the alternator here up to here, and then that wire from those jumper cable wires to this also, and then down, down the frame there. But first step here is to figure out where I want this, you know, whatnot, where I want to put it on the firewall, and we can wire everything in accordance to that. All right, so here I've done quite a bit of wiring since the last I've shown you. Got the main fuse box wired in. Right back here, you can see the main uh, battery lead. And it goes it comes comes from the frame right there and runs up to the uh, fuse box there. And I have this wire coming over here to the starter solenoid, which also mounted on the firewall. Then the wire from that going down to the starter down there. <clears throat> then we got this alternator wired in. Got the main power feed right there. And it goes up and comes to this cool fuse I picked up um, part store. Let's see if we can get this open. It uses a hundred and 50 amp um, mega fuse. See if we can get the camera to focus. But um, got that um, attached to the cedar box. I made sure I didn't run it, drill into the heater core. And then that goes up to the fuse box also. Uh, got a, they had a fusible links in here, but I didn't really like that idea just in case I need to replace it. So I went in and put a, a fuse in. Um, and if, for use that don't know what the 3G alternator conversion is. Uh, you can find out a lot about it online, but base basic thing is uh, I'm going to put electric fans on this, and it's um, kind of a big thing that you need for that because the factory one is about oh, 65 amp, and this one puts out 130 amp, and the electric fans draw about 40 to 50 amps, and so yeah, 
40 amps there, and then you got 10 amps for your uh, headlights, you're running that, and then other stuff, stereo stuff like that. So pretty quickly, if you run electric fans, you can tap out your charging system and end up with a dead battery. So anyway, that's one big thing for that. Plus, I'm going to be running off-road lights and probably a winch, so that's going to help out a lot with that. Anyway, um, then I... This was a, the main plug here from the original voltage regulator, which is another thing about that. It's internally regulated, so I get a, get rid of that big menagerie that was on the fender well. Um, chopped down some wiring here, got rid of some fusible links. Um, these two wires here were what was the main wiring from that. This yellow one is the main wire to the fuse box, I do believe. Um, and this black and orange one is like uh, headlights and stuff. So I rigged that up uh, both to 60 amp fuses in here. Um, the camera is not focusing very well on this stuff, but there it goes. And then this 10 amp one, I used that. That was actually kind of separate from the main wire um, harness. And then fused this wire here, which is like the signal wire or something for the alternator. I don't know, it had a fusible link, so I, I put in an, uh, a fuse in that. And I got the wire ran over to the solenoid for the trigger. And then thinned out some of the wiring for this here is part of the front um, headlight wiring and stuff. And uh, that's like heater and whatnot. So I got it kind of uh, bunched together here. And I'm going to put on some of this. I don't know what the technical term is for it, but it's this tubing stuff that you find all the wiring and you can get it at the parts store and whatnot. I think I got some yellow stuff, which is going to go pretty nice with the yellow engine um, and these extra wires and whatnot I'm going to use those for other circuits probably you know that one I labeled fan because that was the original fan um, fuse and whatnot from the Taurus but these other ones I can use it you know a, a light circuit and who knows what else I want to wire in and if I don't use them I'll probably just pull a fuse out so they're not hot but that's pretty it so far. Um, these two ones right here are actually for the factory amp meter. Um, and I'm not sure if I really want to wire that in. I might just put in an aftermarket uh, voltmeter and just kind of get rid of these. Probably do is cut them off about here and kind of wrap up the excess there. So if I decide I want to put it in and wire it in, I will, but probably not going to. One thing I actually did and kind of bored waiting for some parts to show up is I tore out the dash. Uh, main reason for this was, even though this Bronco is blue, I'm going with the brown interior from the other one I have. Um, and plus, I wanted to get in here and kind of eliminate some junk wiring, like this wire here, which one end's cut because someone pulled out a stereo, and I don't really like the way it's wired for it because I think you have one wire that is your common ground between two speakers, and you got your uh, left and right hot which is an all right way of wiring it, but I'm just going to run individual wires for each one. And I don't know what that one goes to, because down here, it's just dead ends. Um, and then you got wires like this here that just cut off and dead ends. Um, so stuff like that, that I just want to eliminate. Um, let's see what I had behind here. Also, I took out the parking brake. I don't know where it ended up, but I'm actually going to put in a center parking brake um, out of a Jeep Cherokee that I got. Um, this m main reason for that is because the parking brake cable came out from here and down, and when I'm doing 38 inch tall tires with no lift, I need the extra clearance in here, and so anyway, that just makes some more room because it is kind of tight in here with cutting the fenders and everything. So that's one of the reasons, and two, I just kind of wanted the, the center handbrake, but kind of that um, all right so the next thing is probably to put get the dash out of the other one and start bolting it in and going through the wiring and see what I do and don't need um, and start plumbing in some of the accessories I had for the engine like um, see oil pressure um, and water temperature stuff for the Stuart Warner gauges I have and then the oil light and whatnot and then uh, with that I'm then I'm gonna finish up the uh, ignition set up because I also move the DuraSpark ignition module up to the firewall so when I do my fender wells I'm um, gonna, they, the factory ones were plastic inner fender wells and I'm just going to put in some aluminum 
plate that kind of comes over and down. I don't want I want to eliminate as much stuff off of those as I can because I'm probably not going to support them very well. And the, the less holes I have in them, the better. So I've um, got to redo some wiring here. Um, get one of these. I think this one here. Going to have to extend it over there, but that's no big deal. And that's another thing here is I'm going to. A lot of this is just junk wiring that I get to eliminate. Um, I don't know what half of this stuff's for. I've got a wiring diagram for to figure that one out. But anyway, um, there's a bunch of junk wires that I'm not going to use. I mean, some of them I am, but a lot of stuff I ain't. So anyway, that's that.